Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to our Thursday night Bible study. We're so happy you all could join us this evening. We're going to start out by having an opening prayer by Sister Robin Ladd. Heavenly Father, we come before you now, thanking you for this day, God, thanking you for this time, Lord, thanking you for the privilege of being in your presence. Father, we pray for this service, that your will will be done, God, that hearts would be tilled and filled, Lord, and that we would receive your word, God, with as good soil, Lord, uh, help us to allow that word, God, to grow into us, God, um, that we may help others grow, Lord, uh, please continue to keep us walking in your will. Keep us in your way, Father. Please bless us as we go about our days. God, we thank you for your keeping power, Lord. We thank you that we are all gathered here on tonight, God, because it could not have been the same, God, but we thank you so much for all that you have done, Lord. We pray for your continued protection and keeping power, God. Help us to do your will. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Robin. This time we're going to have our scripture reading by Sister Brianna Haley. Um, this is John 15 verses 4 through 5. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. Nor, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Amen. At this time, we're going to have a song by Sister Haley. When I'm at my end, you're just getting started. When I read a wall, you just walk through. When I face a mountain, you are the maker. So it's God in me. When I'm out of faith, you are still faithful. When I'm in my worst, oh, you are still good. And all of my questions, you are the answer. It all points to you. Because you're the God of the breakthrough. When I'm breaking down, you'll be working way through. When there's no way out, this one thing I know, you're still on your throne. So wherever I feel, I've still got a reason to praise, praise. Out of our wrongs, you write our story, and out of the cross comes rivers of grace, and out of the grave burst a revival, no tomb can contain. Cause you're the God of the breakthrough. When I'm breaking down, you'll be working the way through. When there's no way out, this one thing I know, you're still on your throne. So wherever I'm feeling, still got a reason to praise, praise. Praise, I've still got a reason to praise, 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 I've still got a reason to praise, 
when you come around dry bones come to life deserts to paradise stones just start rolling away when you come around my heart starts to beat again lungs stretch to breathe you in souls just erupt in the praise when you come around dry bones come to life deserts to paradise stones just start rolling away when you come around my heart starts to beat again lungs stretch to breathe you in souls just erupt in the praise Cause you're the God of the faith. When I'm breaking down, you'll be working the way through. When there's no way out, this one thing I know, you're still on your throne. So wherever I'm feeling, I still got a reason to praise, praise. I still got a reason to praise, praise, praise. I still got a reason to praise. Cause you're the God of the praise. When I'm breaking down, you'll be working away. Through. When there's no way out, this one thing I know, you're still on your throne. So wherever I'm feeling, I've still got a reason to praise. Man, beautiful. Amen. Beautiful, Haley. Thank you so much. It's always a blessing when we hear your voice singing those songs with such conviction. Um, I'm not sure who's speaking tonight, but I guess we can go ahead and see if there are any testimonies before we get to the speaker. So if you do have a testimony and you'd like to say it now, is your time to say that. Uh, I have a testimony. Okay. Uh, so during that period where I was praying for uh, AP testing, I want to thank you all for your prayers. Uh, when I went in for the test uh, that while back, uh, I was not ready for the test. Uh, I had three tests in total. I was not ready for them, uh, well, two of them. And I did not think I was going to do well. So I prayed and I just asked God that he would just allow me to score better than a two. Uh, it's graded on one to five. Uh, with five being the highest. Uh, so I just prayed that God would give me better in a two. And I looked at my scores for my orientation day and I had two threes and a four. So I want to thank God for that. Amen. 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 That's Amen. awesome, David. God. Amen. Awesome. I know where it works. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else want to get in a testimony before we go to the speaker? Um, I have okay. one. Oh. Okay. okay. Well, mine's more just like a uh, praise God because like y'all, God's just so good. Like he's he's just been so good to me and my family and just those around me. And like I can I feel like I'm really starting to see like how much God is moving in my life and feel like his presence and how much he's moving and blessed me. And just, I'm just, I'm just grateful and I can't keep it to myself. So I, I got to tell somebody, I, I got to tell y'all just how good and how great and how great God has been. So just praise God. Amen. 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 Love it. Love it. Beautiful. Um, so I was just going to tell everybody, just again, thank you for continued prayers on my dad. Uh, I know um, I, I was telling the ladies last night that or even on Sunday, 
we had some decisions to make as far as moving him, relocating him, and um, and I found this place and it is wonderful. The administrator, he's a believer, he's a man of God. The staff, um, uh, the lady we met today, she's like, I'm Pentecostal Holiness Apostolic. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. She said, yeah, hair up in a bun, long dresses and all that. So I was like, so it's just beautiful. So if, if, if he has to move um, and they have room, um, so it's something we can be praying on, but uh, I really, I like this place a lot. So I think it's a great place. And <laughs> What, oh, I didn't see. I didn't see. Did you see the first part no. she put in there? Anyway, so I think she's trying to tip, tip, let everybody wants me to let everybody know that it is free ninety nine. Come on, somebody. <laughs> so hey, uh, I, I, never, I never told y'all just how much is how much it costs per month for where he is. But um, yeah, it's up there, and um, and this place because he's on hospice care and he's a veteran. The VA has a contract with this uh, facility and it will be absolutely free. So I, I can praise God. So God's will be done. If he has to move, I don't have any worries and concerns and where he would have to go. So I just, I thank God. He's able. <laughs> yeah. Praise God. So. Yeah, I moved, I moved with my wife to the facility and uh, I think she would testify that. That facility seems uh, even better than the one he's in. The people were genuine, and it, it was just a, it was like it felt like it was, you know if he is to move, it's to be the right place. So appreciate all the prayers for saints. I know my wife has been and her sister, and uh, have been very concerned about this particular move. A lot of anxiety, but God it seems like God is kind of showing His hand again. So thank y'all for the prayers that contribute to this testimony. Amen. I thank God for my hubby who got to go with me. So it was nice having his presence there. Mm -hmm. so, another man of God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. There's nobody else. We will go ahead and go to our speaker. I'm still not sure who it is. It, I think it's either Pastor Bobby or Pastor John. Well, you know, the funny Pastor thing Pastor Bobby. Is, uh, well, well, the funny thing is, um, I I thought I'd go on last Thursday, but I forgot that <laughs> Pastor John went in my place last Thursday, and I sent out a text to the fellows, uh, to Pastor Daryl and Pastor John, saying, "Hey, who's on tonight?" And Daryl's like, "Well, you are. You didn't go last Thursday, and I rid myself off." But it looks like to me, Pastor John might be ready over there. So um, before I go, I'm like, Pastor John, you know, you like you, you kind of like you ready over there, Doc. So don't don't let you know if you got something, you know, go for it, man. Pastor, Pastor, Pastor Bobby, I'm, I'm going to let you have it. <laughs> Are you sure? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at you like, okay, all right. I'm looking at you like, <laughs> hey, you like you're locked hey, and loaded. Hey, hey, don't get me started because you're, uh, when, when you when you have confidence in anything, it makes me just shift my thinking. <laughs> <laughs> all, all right, right. well, but, uh, okay, all right. Well, well <laughs> you, <laughs> I'm looking at you, I'm like, okay. <laughs> all right, call doc. Uh, I'm gonna go for it if you don't, you know, if you don't. Okay, all right, okay, all right. So, I'm looking at you. I'm, <laughs> okay, all right. We'll, uh, you sure before I go? Yeah, I, I think, I think I'm sure, but like okay. I said, I, I, <laughs> okay. I, I think I'm sure. Okay, all right. Uh, one, one, <laughs> once again, I trust your thoughts more than mine, so <laughs> but I think I'm sure. Okay, all right. All right, we'll go. We'll go to Genesis at nineteen, and and I'll um, I'll um, I'll um, pick up. Um, I'm sure we'll get to hear whatever you were sitting on here. It looks like you're sitting on a good golden egg there. So uh, well, I'm sure we'll get to we'll hear whatever it is uh, fairly soon, sir. <laughs> so, all right. Um, so let's go. Um, let's go to. Um, um, let's go to Genesis nineteen again. I want to pick up a few. Um, Few more uh, insights from the past week day Sunday, um, because I was trying to just give one summary thought from the Sunday, but it was just so many interesting things happened in this passage. Um, and um, so we'll go to Genesis 19, I'll put it up on the screen. Won't take us long. I just need about 20 minutes to glean the rest of what was what was out of there um, Sunday. And, um, and we'll, 
I want to pray for the conventioneers too, uh, Pastor Daryl and Mom and Cynthia and who else at the convention? Oh, Lisa, I see the Tyler, Sharon, Cynthia, and Ray of uh, Philadelphia, Sharon and Mom and uh, Tyler, Joyce and Sherman at the convention, Pastor Daryl at the convention. So just be in prayer for those saints. Thanks. And Joyce Tennessee's at the convention. So we got a, a lot of conventioneers and travelers. So y'all keep them in prayer. Um, would you go ahead and uh, pray for the lesson and we'll uh, see from here. Father God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for the blessings they're in. God, we thank you for watching over, protecting, and keeping us from her home and danger. God, we just pray right now over this word. God, I pray that you would speak, speak through your servant, God, and uh, bless us to have open ears and open hearts to receive your word and walk therein, God. Help us to live a life that you have purpose for us to live, God. Have your way, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, um, and I'll make it brief just in case. Pastor John decides to share whatever he was sitting on, you know, some, <laughs> some of it. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, uh, I, I was, we were this passage Sunday, and and the Lord just gave me something specific to say Sunday about this passage. But as, as I was re reading it, uh, there were so many other little bits and pieces about this particular thing that Missouri pointing out. So I'd like to take about 20 minutes if you'll go along with me and just point out some other things that, that just kind of, when you look at the scriptures, you, you start to see kind of how God operates and if you will, some little small inkling of how he thinks, you know, and, and that I feel funny even saying that because we'll never understand the depth of God uh, in this life. I think God will give us more of an understanding uh, in this next life we have. Isn't that great to talk about the next life, the next chapter after this one? But um, and we'll never understand God in any measure. Uh, but the Bible does say like Moses understood God's ways. And it seems like seems like sometimes as believers, we can see God's ways, kind of how he operates, how he kind of looks at things, just a glimpse. Um, and uh, in this passage, you, you see some kind of ways, uh, some things about God that are very interesting to me. So, um, and I'd like to point those out since I'm not under um, assignment to give that uh, particular word we gave Sunday. I want to just point out some observations I had, like, wow, I'd love to point that out. I'd love to point that out. I'd love to point that out. So I'll take the night and kind of point a few of those things out. So, so you know, we often meet the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. And, um, and, and, you know, even though God has set a day when he's going to judge the world, people people can, like, cuss God out. And, you know, I, I had people even throw rocks toward heaven. So I'm, so I'm like, this is for you, God. You know, throw, and nothing happens to them. You know, I used to, as a child, I used to think they'd get struck by a bolt of lightning or something. I remember a friend of mine cussed at God. A uh, piece of hell hit him. And he cussed at God and said, you know, ouch, you know, so-and-so, that hurts. And he just cussed at God. And I kind of moved to the side. I was expecting a lightning bolt to come down and hit him or something. But um, But God allows people to carry on. And he set a day when he's going to judge everybody. He's very patient and gives them space to repent. And uh, the reason he doesn't get them right away is he's giving them space to repent. Very patient God. He does, he's not willing that anybody should perish. So, um, and, 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 but Sodom, every now and then, people's wickedness gets so great that God, even though he set a day in which he'll judge the world, says, I'm, you know, I'm just not going to deal with that. I'm just not going to have that on my planet. God created this planet. God set some rules and set some things in order. And he has a prerogative to say, hey, I'm just not going to have that. No, yeah, I've said a day in which I'm judged well, but right now I'm just not gonna have that, you know. And, and he just and he will just uh, Genesis six is a classic case. Man got so wicked, God said, I'm just gonna wipe everybody out. Sort of, he's just God. He can do what he wants to do. He's very patient. He's very loving. He gives space to repent. But it reached a point where he just said, you know what, I'm just not gonna have that. And so we kind of find that in Genesis 19 with the wickedness that this city was doing, and that's why we don't have any trouble calling these things wicked. You know, the world changes and standards change, and you know, um, I was talking to uh, a lady earlier. Uh, earlier this week and we were talking along and she said yeah my wife blah 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 just so conversationally and uh, i couldn't say anything but oh okay okay because i'm in a public setting but in church i can tell you right now you know and we're not going to turn the tape off that's wicked you know a woman married a woman is wicked and, and, and we've got to show people that christ has has intended for us to be better than that and when wickedness we still got to call it as it is in the church we cannot sugarcoat things uh, and I know we're on the airways, and I know that, you know, people, you know, um, get offended. But we have to call sin, sin in the church. And uh, there are certain things that God just, just doesn't go along with. And um, and there is a right and wrong, wrong way to do that. And um, and we have to reach to all people uh, and be loving. Um, but being loving does not mean that you don't call sin, sin. And someone, there's a, there's a line I'm trying to find. Uh, we have to take a stand for the word of God and we have to be loving. And anybody who's got that wall figured out, let me know and, and give me some counseling and some classes because I'm, I'm trying to find it. You know, where is that line to, to walk in love and speak the truth? 
particular truth and love. So help me, help me, saints. So, uh, but but there's some thing that God just just doesn't put up with. And we find some, uh, uh, if you look at Rome and how debauched they got right before they were destroyed as an empire, um, and you look at Sodom and Gomorrah, you see some things that God just just just, just won't deal with. Uh, and, and it makes me wonder, uh, honestly, saints, about our country, you know, the, the path we go down, what we endorse and what we embrace, and, and how as a country we start to embrace things. And I wonder, you know, is our time coming up? I, I'm just, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I really do. So um, when we go to uh, Genesis 19, um, the, what had happened was, if you read the previous chapters, this city was so wicked that the cry, quote unquote, came up to God. You know, there were basically angels saying, God, how can you let this go on? How can you let this go on, on your planet? And so uh, if you remember the story of David um, uh, and Bathsheba. And one of, the, one of the things that you may not have paid attention to was when David, uh, when Nathan talked to uh, David, he says, Part of the problem is you've given the enemies of the Lord a chance to blaspheme. In other words, they're, they're up there saying, God, how can you bless this man? And he's carrying on like this. He had a man killed and took his wife. And, and, and they blasphemed God, basically saying he was playing favorites and allowing this kind of sin to go un, un, undealt with. And it says, you've given the enemies of God an opportunity to blaspheme. That's basically what it boils down to. And, um, and so when you think about how the angels and Satan, uh, the evil angels, accuse the brethren, um, you get kind of a glimpse into how things operate um, uh, in the heavenlies. It's uh, just a glimpse. Uh, but here's another uh, 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 portal into uh, how God thinks about things. Just, just a little inkling we can understand. So the, the, the cry the, 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 the cry has gone up before God. How can you allow this to go on, you know, on your planet? And so God, even though he knows everything, chooses again to use the agency of angels to administer his, uh, his, to, uh, administer his adjudication. So uh, the angels are coming down now to evaluate things. Even though God knows everything, he still chooses to use men. He chooses to use men, use angels. He chooses to use you. He does not need men. He does not need angels. He does not need you. But he chooses to use you. He chooses to use me. And that, that's just a blessing. And so he dispatches some angels to look into this matter. Not, he doesn't need to be informed. He knows. But he uses, he chooses to use me and you and even angels. So and we pick up the story where the two angels have come down. Genesis 19. Um, uh, any volunteer, any, just read whoever feels it, just read. Uh, give me verse one. Anybody, let's all participate tonight. They would be 20 minutes and we'll be done. <laughs> and there came two angels to Sodom at evening, mm -hmm. and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose, mm -hmm. seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early, and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. So the first thing you notice here is that Lot did not know they were angels. Okay, uh, he did not know they were angels. The, these, they appeared as men. And so um, there have been, uh, as far as I can tell, uh, many appearances of angels, God still uses them. We know from the book of Hebrews that God still uses angels today. And they don't come with wings and, and halos. They come looking like people. Uh, I'm convinced that God has sent angels in my life. I told you um, about a time I was, you know, I car had gone off the road and there was nobody there. And all of a sudden this guy showed up and I asked him who he was. He said his name was Michael. And he took my car and towed it on the road. And, and I looked up to thank him and he was gone. And uh, and I'm like, wow, you know, and I drove my car trying to trying to track him. No, no trace. My dad, when he was swimming uh, in a pool, was drowning um, before any of us were born and uh, before he married my mom. And somebody came out of nowhere, drug him to shore. He turned around to thank the man. The man was gone. Um, and uh, I'm convinced that was an angel. God says in the book of Hebrews that they are sent to minister to those who are heirs of salvation. So. A lot of times, you know, and the Bible says that we have entertained angels unawares. So uh, when God uses angels, uh, generally they're in a human form. They look like a woman or a man or however they appear, but uh, they look like a human and, and, and they're here. And, and some at some point, it, you know, you, you say, wow, that just sounds crazy. No, that's just Bible. Uh, God uses uh, angels yet today. And, and they delight to do his will, just as there are evil angels that are working against you and working against God's plan. They're also good angels. Jesus even told the, uh, the, the children of Israel, 
that the children have angels assigned to them. And that's where we get the, the idea of guardian angels. But he says the, the angels of the children always behold the fathers uh, face in heaven. So if you think about it, God has always used angels, uh, messengers, uh, to get his will done. In this case, Lot didn't even know they were angels. So uh, there can be people intervening in your life that are angels and you don't even know it. <laughs> and, and someday we'll teach on angelology and, and cover some more detail. Uh, somebody else, give me verses three and four. Anybody else? Pressed upon them and he pressed. Go ahead, the female reader. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him, and entered into his house, and he made them a feast, and did break under them bread, and they did eat. Mm -hmm. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. Okay, so here's another uh, interesting thing. Um, in, in that day, it was a custom when strangers came in, you took them into your house. Uh, we don't do that much anymore because we don't know, you know, who's coming in. But, uh, but uh, so uh, by heavenly appointment, Lot was out there just doing what, uh, doing what, what's required as an elder uh, to be out there to greet the strangers. And as a result, uh, he found himself in the will of God. A lot of times you just do what you're supposed to do. The will of God finds you. Everybody's out running around looking for the will of God. They want something spectacular. But if you just do what you're supposed to do, if you get up and go to work, if you're a mom, you stay there and do, do what you're supposed to do, or dad, you do what you're supposed to do, or employee, you do. If you just do what you're supposed to do, the will of God will find you. <laughs> you don't have to go looking. So the will of God found, uh, found Lot. He's out doing, doing, doing what elders do. And as soon as these men uh, hit Lot's house, this is how wicked the city was. Word got around, hey, there's some new men in town and and the men of the city came to lot's house go ahead uh give me some another read for the next two verses another reader next two verses so, and they called unto lot and said unto him where are the men which came into thee this night bring them out unto us that we may know them. read and lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him Okay, this is so bad. You know, they see these guys come to the house and the lot has to step outside and shut the door. I mean, come on, how debauched are you? If I have to step outside my house and shut the door for free, you might just try to bust in there. Uh, I mean, any sense of civility and decorum is gone with this wicked bunch. They gather at Lot's door. He has to step outside and, and, and just kind of talk to him. And, and he says, verse seven, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Don't, 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 don't do this. Don't do it. And he does not at this point even know they're angels. Now, uh, I'm going to skip over verses uh, uh, eight and nine. Um, they, there, there's some, there's some depth of thought there uh, that I want to get into right now. Uh, uh, skip over to, uh, um, skip over to, um, uh, well, give me verse nine. I'm going to skip over verse eight for now. Give me verse nine. No, new reader, verse nine and 10. And they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came in to sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them? And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. Okay, but so they, they, uh, they, I'm sorry, babe. Uh, they, they basically said, Lot, since you didn't bring these men out, we're going to deal with them, and we're going to deal with you worse. The stuff we're going to do to them, we're going to do to you even worse. I mean, you're talking about just brazen wickedness. Because you didn't bring these men out for us to have sport with, uh, we're going to deal with them uh, in a sexual way and then do worse to you than what. I mean, this is a man, this is a group of men talking to a man. I mean, if you can get this in your mind, this is just crazy. Next, now give me the next verse. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut to the door. Okay, so now Lot does not know these are angels yet, and these men don't know who they're dealing with. So Lot thinks he's going to protect them, but these angels, <laughs> angels, are, angels are cold, okay? Angels are cold, you know? <laughs> Bible says one, one can put a thousand, I mean, one angel put a thousand in flight. I mean, what you going to do with angels swing and his fist just goes through him? He's just sitting there looking. <laughs> I mean, so Lot thought he was protecting these men, but he about to find out who he was. I love it when God packs a surprise punch. You know, when folk don't know who they're dealing with, they think, they, they think they're dealing with just you. And turns out God is standing back there going, uh-huh, uh-huh. You ever seen one of those, uh, one of those uh, videos where they're, they're about to mess with somebody 
and uh, and then they're about to attack some. And then then the, the whoever the bandits are, the culprits are, they start they look and they start running. Um, um, and 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 then, and then the, the little innocent person think, wow, I scared him off. And then standing behind him is is the superhero. Like like yeah, mess with mess with this. I remember the movie Lion King when um, when when the wolves was surrounding uh, Simba. And, uh, and and Simba was trying to roar, and he couldn't get his roar together. And all of a sudden, uh, you heard this loud roar, and Simba thought he had done it. And those wolves just backing up. And Simba was like, wow, I did it. And he looked around, and Mufasa was back there like, you mess with my boy? Seriously? <laughs> I mean, that, you know, that was just a cold. I, I was like, for that minute, I was Mufasa. I was like, yeah, yeah, those are my kids, and I'm Mufasa. And that's, and that's, that's the enemy over there. I mean, what father just didn't get a kick out of seeing that? And the Bible says God delights to show himself strong on behalf of those um, yeah, you know, who, who, whose heart is, is, is toward him. So, um, so in this case, Lot thinks he's protecting these men, but these men are about to show who they are. You know, these are angels. And so, so this time, look at what happens in verse, uh, the next verse. Because um, remember, initially Lot stepped out and shut the door behind him to protect those men. Now look, look who shuts the door this time. But the men put forth their hand. Did you read that verse 10, sweetheart? Give me again. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut to the door. This time they shut the door. <laughs> you know, Lot stepped out the first time and shut the door to protect these men. But this time the men reached out and grabbed Lot, put him, and then they shut the door. Like, like we got this, you know. So Lot's about to find out who they are. Somebody else, give me, give me uh, verse 11 and verse 12. New reader. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness both small and great so that they were wearied so that they wearied themselves to find the door this is and insane i'm <laughs> i'm sorry this, this is just insane <laughs> it now, is. this is just insane <laughs> uh you know the, the, if i've been smitten with blindness and all of us we come to tax in my house and all of us blind i'm leaving this brother's like <laughs> Lord, I repent. you know these guys were groping, still trying to find the door. Couldn't see. Like, we just got to get it. We can just find the doorknob. Do you feel the doorknob? All of them blind, but their lust and their desire had consumed them to the point, and, and, and their evil will to the point. They were still trying to break this man's house. I am, you know, <laughs> what, what's that phrase? My name is Wes. I ain't in this mess. Uh, my name is Jerome, and I'm yeah. gone. You know, <laughs> my name is Bennett, and I ain't in it. You know, uh, uh, you know. <laughs> My name is Seymour and I ain't in it no more. Uh, I'm gone. Uh, <laughs> you know, at the point that you strike me with blindness, you the man. I'm leaving. I'm repenting. These guys wore themselves out trying to find the door after they've been smitten with blindness. Now, a lot is getting an idea of who they were now because because not everybody strikes anybody with blindness. <laughs> not everybody can do that. <laughs> I, I, I love, as a matter of fact, I love an ax. Uh, I forget which passage it is. Maybe you can help me, Pastor John, uh, where... Um, Paul is it 1819 when he's on the Isle of uh, he's on an island and somebody's following him um, going these men show us the way to God and they had a, a, a familiar spirit and Paul and uh, and, uh, and and was it somebody stood and stood against Paul and, uh, and, uh, and 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 spoke against him and something and he said you know you will be blind you won't see the sun for a season some sorcerer or something spoke against him and uh, and I mean just had that kind of power you know and it immediately blindness fell upon him you know uh, that just it's just stuff you see in scripture where you, you realize that you're dealing not with a man but with God. But back to this passage. Uh, so they wore themselves out trying to find a door. So if you strike me with blindness, I'm done. You win. I'm gone. I'm repenting. These guys kept it up. Just how wicked they were. Next verse. Give me uh, now. Give me the next verse, sweetheart. Verse twelve. Who's reading just now? Was it Brittany? Oh, I'm sorry. I was yeah. sorry. Oh, John. Go ahead. And the men said unto Lot. Hast thou here any besides, son-in-law, and thy sons, and thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place? Okay, so the angels have made the decision. <laughs> and apparently, uh, God had given them some leeway and leverage over, the, over this decision. Now, I can't support that uh, fully scripturally, but it looks like they were sent there to evaluate uh, and make a decision. And based on what they saw, uh, looks like to me they had the power to destroy that city if they deemed it necessary. It seemed like God dispatched them authority. Now, that's kind of controversial because you can say ultimately the decision was God's. 
but it looks to me, just reading the passage, that God had given him some kind of leeway uh, uh, about whether to go ahead and make that call or not. And I will tell you this, in, in, in a lot of times in your life, you will find that God has given you some leeway over what to do next. It's not that God always has a specific way, hear me good, a specific way that something has to be done. Sometimes God will give you the option. I've experienced it. I can back this up with, scripturally. Sometimes God will give you the option. And so some things God, some decisions God will commit to you. You know, some, some that, that you can, you can do it. Uh, God, God, and I can back this up scripturally, but I won't tonight, but I can back this up absolutely scripturally. God will give you some leeway in decision making. It's not so much that God has a specific way he wants everything done all the time. Sometimes uh, there is a perfect will of God, but God will give you leeway in some decisions and allow you to make them. Uh, uh, and, and can I add this? God knows your heart and is confident you'll make the right call. Is that too much to handle? <laughs> and, and you say, God, what do you want me to do? And God says, what do you want to do? <laughs> In this case, you it's like, it hey, you. <laughs> huh? It's, it's, huh? Yeah, it's, it's, it's something you can reach a point where God can, you know, at, at, it, the way we would say it, he, he trusts you enough, but God knows everything. But God will allow you to have some some leeway over, over your own life. And we'll, as a matter of fact, we'll see an example here, right here in this passage, which I didn't even think about to just now. Right in this passage, we'll see what God allows that. Okay, uh, that's two verses. I uh, will time. I'm trying to keep it short. Hey, okay, we're doing good. Okay, all right. Um, let's see here. Um, so they basically let him know they're in charge in verse 12. Who you got? Get your sons and daughters. And, 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 and get ready to get out of here. So they have gone from being strangers who are going to leave the next morning. Remember that when Lot started with me, stay the night and then leave the next morning. They've gone to like, hey, we in charge here. <laughs> you know, so you get your son. I mean, it's the whole scenery has shifted and the, the angels are in charge now. And, and they're making, to me, it looks like they're making decisions. All right. Verse 13. Uh, give me verse 13. Um, give me verse 13. Well, Next we reader. will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. Now, in 13, they tell Lot, get your stuff. We're going to destroy it. They came to evaluate. They stayed the night. When the men made their move, they had the okay from the Lord to destroy it. They'd already gotten their permission to do it. I think they were there to evaluate and make the call. They had the leeway, the order had already been given. And these men, you know, I, 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 and honestly, um, this could have been so different. God gives people space to repent. If God wanted to rain down fire and, 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 and brimstone on Sodom, he'd have to send these angels. What were they there for? He could have brought Lot out. I think this was their last evaluation. Now, I'm not saying that that is what everybody will see in this passage. They came down to see. If you read why they came down, they were talking with Abraham first. They came down to see, to evaluate. And I think these men sealed that evaluation. They had, the, they had the orders to pull the plug. They did the evaluation. The men made it easy for them. They already had their orders. They already had the, 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 the leeway to do it. Um, even if you go back to this, these, how these angels operate, even when it come to, came to Daniel, uh, if you look at the evil angels interfering with good angels, God allowed that. Uh, there's a certain leeway God allows, and it's just fascinating to see sometimes. In verse 19, I'm sorry, verse 13, same reader. Was that you, D? Verse 13. Uh, re read 13 again? Yeah, yeah, read 13 again. Huh? Okay. For we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. Wow. I go back to the conversation that, um, God have Abraham. If I find 50, if I find 10, if I find five righteous uh, men, to me, if those men had repented, say 10 of them had repented, God had already told Abraham he wasn't going to destroy it. These people had a chance to turn it around, and I see a space to repent here. When they came to the door and, and Lot stepped out to them, if somebody I said, you know what? This ain't right, guys. We just, this ain't right. I think even then, if there would have been 10 of them, that number God promised to Abraham. What was the low number? Was it five or 10? The low number God promised to Abraham. Anybody know offhand? We don't have to look there. Was it 10? It was five. Was it five? 
So all it took was five people on that porch to say, you know what, brother, this ain't right. Let, 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 let's turn this thing around. They would have spared the city because God already told Abraham that. Space to repent. Verse 14. Uh, 1450, new reader. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. So it didn't take a lot longing to, to, to see what was going on, but 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 his sons-in-law just didn't believe him. You ever try to tell somebody how serious something was and you knew God was dealing with you on and they just wouldn't take it seriously? You ever tried to convince people that the word of God that he was that you were giving them was serious and they wouldn't take it? Anybody had that experience? You ever tried to warn your child that this ain't nothing to play with and they didn't take it seriously? You ever tried to warn a friend, hey, you shouldn't be doing that, man, and they just they laughed it off? This situation I found himself in with sons-in-laws. Read. Next verse. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. They had to leave the boys, the son-in-laws there. They, they like, y'all y'all serious? Y'all want me to do what? Oh, man, I, I got time. You know, they just blew off the word of God. So the angel said, okay, and the angels were fully in charge now. <laughs> Get out, take your, take your daughters and go. You ain't got much time. Read. Next two verses, new reader. Sixteen seventy, new reader. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. <laughs> you know, they were still lingering around. And God being merciful, the angels told them, get out. They seen these people smoke. They seen these angels smoke the men with, with blindness. The angels told them the city's about to destroy it. And they were still like, like, man, I can't believe this is happening. What are we going to do? The angels literally grabbed them by the hand and took them out of the city. God being merciful. Sometimes we fool around. God just has to take us by the hand and grab us and get us to a safe place. They took them outside the city. Lot and his two daughters. Read. And it came to pass when they were brought, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Angels gave them very clear instructions. When God wants you to avoid the destruction, the the destruction, the instructions get real clear. It's real simple. God doesn't give you a complex set of things to do to avoid destruction. When your life and your soul's on the line, God tends to make things very plain. Look at this word we gave Sunday. Don't look back. Don't go back. Your life is on the line. When you are in this kind of peril, the word of God is often as plain as ever be because God knows you need simple instructions. Get out now. And he gives them these simple instructions. Here's what he tells them. How hard is this to do? God is saving their, saving them. He says, um, he says, he said, verse 17, escape your life, run. Don't look behind. Is that simple enough? Run. Don't look back. Don't stop in the plane. Go to the mountains. Otherwise, you'll be destroyed. Is it, I mean, just simple instructions. Is that complex? No. Okay, now to, to bring this thing to a close, um, I want to, I kind of want to, um, let's see, man. Uh, you know what? Let me, let me just do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take five minutes longer than I want to take. Uh, give, somebody, give me verse 1920. Real quick, 1920. Behold, now, thy servant have found grace in thy sight, and thou. I'm, I'm sorry, verse, verse 18. I'm sorry, 18, 1920. I'm sorry. Go ahead, read. And Lot said unto them, Oh, not so, my lord. Behold, now, thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life, and I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me and I die. Be now, this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. You know, this is just a child. You know, this, this is just a, this is how we, this is how, this is your child. You're trying to get them out of the way of a car that's coming and they just trying to, 
pick up a flower they dropped in the road. You like snatch them out of the way. Oh, I dropped my flower, daddy. And, and you got to snatch them. But, he, but here's Lot with angels. They saying, I can't make it that far. Let me go to this city. And look at the grace and mercy of God. And again, I wonder in the back of my mind, this was some uh, angelic, um, uh, some angelic leverage over the situation. I think this was an angelic call here. Um, and I'll tell you why in a second. Um, uh, look at look at uh, verse twenty one. Give me verse twenty one. And he said unto him, and he said unto him, See, I have I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I would not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. Uh, uh, so again. Uh, these are angels. Now, if, when you read this, when you read who it was that that came to Abraham, you start to wonder if this was a theophany, if this was if this was the pre-incarnate pre Christ. And there's a case for that. Mm -hmm. You know, this this could have been the pre-incarnate Christ. Uh, when you start to look at how this angel dealt with Abraham, these two men dealt with Abraham, um, it could could very well be. But what he says, see, I have I have I have accepted the concern this thing also that I will not over this city for the which I have spoken. All right. So uh, we have a case for this being the pre-incarnate Christ. And also when you look at how he dealt with Abraham, you, you, that case is even more magnified. Give me verse 22. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou become thither. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zorah. Okay, then you look at verse, uh, look at, um, so you say, well, maybe this is Christ. And he says, um, haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou, be, till thou become thither. Um, Either or thither, it's tomato, tomato, either one of those is correct. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zar. So again, this angel says, I can't do anything till you're gone. Well, who's restraining him? Well, is this Christ or is it not? So the case is kind of open here with angelology. We'll, we'll, we'll dab in that when we do angelology. But this angel apparently has some Latin sway over what happened next. So he says, I can't do anything till you be gone. So God has set up a situation so until his children are safe. And out of harm's way, nothing's going to happen. That's the mercy of God. Okay, uh, give me verse um, uh, 24. I'm going to stop at verse 26. But give me verse uh, 24. Uh, okay, I'm uh, sorry, verse 23. The Anybody? sun had risen upon uh -huh. the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. So because Lot asked this little city, this, this little city was going to be destroyed. It, it was just like a suburb, like if you're in Dallas, um, or if you're in Oklahoma City, Edmond might be a server, uh, Moore might be a server. All those places had regional wickedness. They were part of that wicked culture in that region. That region was wicked. They were going to be destroyed. But because Lot asked to go to Zoar, uh, that little city was spared. And a lot of times, just one righteous man, I mean, you might be the whole reason your budget didn't cut, your whole department's budget didn't get cut because God was keeping you in your job. Somebody ought to say amen. <laughs> your whole department. Was spared because you were there, and God says, "I need Pastor John to get his check, so therefore the whole department won't be cut." I'm, I'm saved because God is God; He can do that. I'm, I'm just gonna get this whole school afloat just so one. You know, God is just cold. I just say it. I mean, I just can't give another word. Uh, and God's just cold. He's, he's like everybody in this school gets a job because Pastor John works there, and I'm not allowed. You know, not gonna allow this building be not gonna allow the school to be shut down. No cuts. You know, I mean, just. What God does for his children, we're just going to be blown away when we get to heaven and find out all the things and understand the depth to which God loves us. We were running around questioning God's love. I don't know if he loved me or not. And we, we, we're just going to be so embarrassed when we see the level to which God has covered. We're just going to be ashamed. Like, God, I'm sorry. Like your kid telling you, Dad, I thought you didn't love me when you told me no. But I see you were protecting me from this. You know, when they get older, they say, I see why you told me no on this and on that. You know, and, 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 and I see that that was love. And that's the same way we're going to be. The level to which God does. This whole city is spared. And they probably treated Lot any kind of way. Y'all ain't saying nothing. They, they probably treated Lot any kind of way we came to town. Oh, it's just Lot. Not realizing that the only reason they didn't get burned to smithereens, to ashes, was because he was there. And you saying to God, on your job, you get treated any kind of way. They have no idea that you hold up the whole department. They, you, you are why the department has a budget. Somebody ought to say amen. Your father's watching out. The last two verses I'm going to look at are 25 and 26. Now, they had... Um, uh, verse two, verse two, uh, go back. Uh, what, what would any, any without going back? Does anybody remember the three things the angels told them to do to, to live? And you won't be consumed with three things. Um, keep for your life, uh huh. Live for your life, don't uh -huh. stop in the planes, and don't keep stop in the plane. Keep going until you get to the mountain, and don't look back. Don't look back. So simple. 
Run for your life. Don't stop in the plane. Don't look back. It's just when, when, when your life is on the line, let me tell you, you get very, you can't tell God I didn't know. You get very clear instructions before the enemy comes at you to destroy you, before, before things. You, you get very, God is a loving, merciful God. He, he, you get clear. One, two, three. Run for your life. Don't stop in the plane. Slash, make it to the mountain. Don't look back. Simple. All you got to do, and you live. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. <laughs> we get clear instructions. You believe it not, it's condemned already. Clear instructions. Verse 25, I'll stop at verse 26. Give me verse 25. In fact, I'll read it. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain, told him not to stop, so all the plain got destroyed. The place he told them to stop, God already told them. If they stopped there, <laughs> It had been too bad. All the suburbs and all the inhabitants of the cities, the plains of the suburbs, he overthrew those cities, all the plain and all the inhabitants of those cities, and that which grew upon the ground. God wiped out the whole region, except for Zoar, <laughs> where a lot was. Verse 26, where we'll stop. Let his wife look back from behind him. Now, she, what, what, what was she told specifically not to do? Don't look back. You just had three things to do, and your <laughs> life is spared, right? Mm -hmm. Run for your life. Don't stop in the plane. Go to the mountains. Don't look back. That's it, and you live. Read that again, D. I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> but his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. <sighs> Jesus in his teaching in the New Testament at one point, I think it's the second shortest verse in the New Testament behind uh, Jesus' web. Um, it says, he says, remember Lot's wife. You, and, and, and so we'll stop there. And saints, we, you, you, we have such simple instructions when it comes to this walk. Christ died for our sins and rose again. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. It's just, 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 and we can rejoice and take our hope and our comfort and our fellowship in that and our joy and our peace. We have believed on the living God, the Lord, and we shall be saved. We can't let the enemy take our faith and get us into doubt and fear. We, we just had simple instructions. All we do is cling to this old red cross, <laughs> but not let go. So we've got our, the same way they had theirs, and one person didn't follow it. We've got ours. We're going to hold on to the end. I want to close this with um, either Robin or Hillel. One of y'all was singing the old Red Cross. I don't know which one of y'all, Robin or Hillel. I don't, I don't remember which one, which one of y'all was singing it this, uh, a week or so ago. Which one, which one of y'all was singing the old Red Cross? I think it was Robin, wasn't it? Robin, it Robin? sang it at the okay. church. Okay, Robin, can you can you uh, can you give me a verse to the old Red Cross, and then we'll turn it back into the hands of our uh, MC. Simple instructions: Believe in Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins and rose again. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and shall be saved. Hold on to that to the end, and you'll make it. You got simple instructions: cling to this old rugged cross. Don't let it go. Whenever you're ready, Robin, and then um, Richie, you can take it back. Two verses would be fine. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest stand best. For a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. And I will cling to the old rugged cross. And exchange it someday 
for a crown. Oh, that old rugged cross, so despised by the world, has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to bear it on dark cavalry. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Be on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Ain't that old rugged cross. Back your hands, Bridget. Amen, amen. We thank God for the word this evening. We thank God uh, for the cross. Thank God for sending his son to die for our sins. Give us salvation. At this time, we're going to have a closing prayer. Um, not sure who's going to do it. Does anybody feel led to do the closing prayer? Oh, we, I'm sorry, we didn't hear from Pastor John. Um, maybe, maybe he can have some say before the prayer or whatever. So, okay, Pastor John, Pastor John. Ian, 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 praise. I'm sorry. Amen. Uh, beautiful uh, word, timely word. Um, the critical. Uh, <laughs> it's critical that we hear God <laughs> and that we move. We do what he's asking us to do. And uh, I just really, uh, I mean, it's easy, it's easy to, for me to relate to Lot's wife in many ways. I mean, just, you know, there are so many distractions in our society and so many things mm -hmm. are trying to draw us out of the will of God or, or just, or just captivate our attention for a moment outside of the will of God. Um, but it's vital that we listen to the words of God and Jesus Christ right now. <laughs> it, it's all about his son. It's all about trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, as we do that, you know, we are fulfilling uh, to a great degree our calling. And, uh, and it doesn't always stop there. There's sometimes, uh, sometimes he decides, you know, sometimes he speaks about other topics that we need to, take heed to and uh, and listen to and move on those instructions. And we don't know what the results could end up being if we are not, if we're cavalier about um, what God has said. Uh, so we have to approach his words reverently, thankfully, and, uh, and, and with a, with an attitude of action. And uh, I just, I just thank you for this word. It's just super powerful. And I, I, I can close with some prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, we just come before you um, in Jesus' name. Father, first and foremost, God, forgive us of our sins, God. Forgive us of our sins, God. And Father, uh, there are sins that we've committed that we don't even know. We don't even fully understand. Um. There are attitudes in our hearts that, that that we don't we don't even we haven't fully identified as sin, but you see straight through us. 
you see straight the risk God. And, uh, and then there's things in our heart that we know, you know, aren't of you. There are attitudes that we have that we know aren't of you. There are actions that we take that we know aren't of you. Father, we ask, Father, those things, we confess them right now in Jesus' name. We ask God that you um, put them in the sea of forgetful. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that washes us from our sins, God, as we cling to the old rugged, rugged cross, God. And I just ask God that you just forgive us, God. Help us to hear your words, God, the vital words. Help us to strive, claw, and fight to hear your words, God. And then, God, give us the the compulsion and the audacity to do what you called us to do, to be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving ourselves. Help us to, to apply your words, your words in our life, your instructions in our lives. And Father, we just, uh, we love you so much. We just love you. You are amazing. You are high above the heavens. You're so worthy of all the praise offerings we can offer and much, much, much more, Father. And our, 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 our praises fall far short of what you're worthy of, God. But I just thank you, God, that you, you give us the privilege of praising you, of worshiping you, of loving you, God. Thank you, Father. We love you so much. and Thank you for all that you've given us. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you for um, protecting us, God. Thank you for all the provisions that we don't know about. <laughs> Thank you for moving righteous people in our neighborhood and at our job and vicariously protecting us because you love them so much. <laughs> And thank you that sometimes we're that righteous person for others. Yes. Father, I mean, if we could see the 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 balance sheet <laughs> in the heavens. Oh, I, I I don't know if we could spend another second. I don't know if we'd have time to eat for, for not praising you, God, or sleep. We just have to praise you all the time, God. <laughs> I just, uh, you know, if we could just see the balance sheet of how many times you've protected us, how many times you've sent messengers to serve us, how many times you've uh, protected us from our own devices, how many times that we looked at a, a problem in our lives or an injury or a, uh, something that we viewed in a negative light, Father, and we didn't realize it was your mighty hand protecting us from ourselves, from from the wicked one, God. We just, Father, you are just so worthy. You're beyond worthy. Beyond anything we have to offer. So we just say hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being a lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Thank you, Jesus, for hanging on that cross. Thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy and your vision. Thank you. All the things that we overlook, God, would take for granted. Thank you, God, for this breath that I'm breathing. I don't know how it got here, and I don't know if it's going to be here in 10 seconds. I just trust in it because you're so faithful. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Father, we love you. We thank you. We praise you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor John, as you were praying, I just I just thought about one thing too while you were long line you're praying. I said you're praying about uh we can see the balance sheets. I thought about how many times has in Oklahoma has a tornado gone the other way because one of God's children <laughs> was in the neighborhood. <laughs> how many times? <laughs> anyway, I thought about that one too while you're praying. So brother, thank God for you. Amen. Amen. I mean, we've all you know, if, if y'all have ever witnessed a wreck, I remember, uh, uh, and I've, I've shared this testimony several times, but it still amazes me to this day. Um, I was, we were on my way to Bible college. My wife was driving. I was, I was horribly sleepy. And I believe that was God's provision, me being sleepy in that moment, because that was his 
means of communication to me. And I had a dream while I was sleeping of these uh these, these big old gravel trucks getting a horrible wreck and we were spinning around, all of the gravel trucks were rolling around. It was just, you know, it was it was certainly gonna result in, in massive injury if not there. And I woke up and guess what was in front of us? <laughs> there were a bunch of gravel trucks. We're on our way to Bible College, a bunch of gravel trucks. I wake up after after God sent me that dream. I told the, I said, and I this is how crazy it was. I was so sleepy that I could not stay awake. I I, I said, DeAndre, get back above these gravel trucks. God just showed me a dream of these gravel trucks crashing and 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 spinning around and all this stuff happening. And we were in the middle of it, back up off of them. And then De, and DeAndre, if y'all anybody who knows DeAndre, she don't back up off nobody. <laughs> <laughs> she runs up on you, you know. <laughs> Drive wise. All right. Anyway, um, and uh so so DeAndre backed up off, and I couldn't even bear to to stay awake. I was so sleepy that I fell back asleep. And I woke up when we were about 200, 300 yards away from those gravel trucks because DeAndre listened to what I said, and, and those gravel trucks were sure enough, they were spinning around, flipping around, and uh uh, I mean, it was just a crazy, you know, I mean, these are big old gravel trucks. I mean, they, they were, you know, I mean, it was <laughs> and uh, it was just a crazy accident that happened on the highway. And. Uh, <laughs> and I mean, you know, I, I could have woke up and saw the gravel truck, man. Oh, you know what? I, I had that dream because. Cause you know, there were gravel trucks here and my subconscious knew that. And, you know, I, and, and you know, my subconscious understood, uh-uh, God speaks like, and he protects and he didn't have to send me that dream at all. Right. What he could have done. And he does this so often, by the way, is just allowed everything to unfold and, and just protected us in it. But he chose to put his signature on the protection. Hmm. And he chose to put his signature on the protection so I would have the understanding to give him praise, to uh -huh. give him glory, to give him honor, to bless his holy name. That's why he put his signature on it. Most of his blessings don't come with a signature. Most of his blessings don't, you know, he doesn't just say, this is a gift from God. They don't come hand, hand wrapped like that. He just protects. He just yeah. provides. He just delivers. Come on, brother. Amen. But he's always worthy of praise. And that's why everything that has breath has an obligation to praise God. By Amen. the way, that's the breath that he gave them. Everything Amen. that has breath has an obligation to praise God. Amen. Amen. So as we go through our day, understand he ain't putting his signature on all these blessings, but they're coming down from him. <laughs> we don't have to see no signature to know where they came from. It ain't your boss promoting you because the Come Bible on. says pr promotion coming not from the east or from the rest, from the south, but promotion comes from the Lord. Amen. And your Amen. boss ain't promoting you. <laughs> your blessings ain't coming from your coworkers. Your blessing ain't coming from your friends. And, you know, uh, you know, your blessing ain't coming from the person that sent you the money on cash at. No, uh -uh. that blessing came from the Lord. Preach it. Preach it. Man. And there's so many that go unnoticed, unseen, unsigned. But if you could see the balance sheet in heaven, you would have no choice but to, to but to praise his holy name. I, I I don't think I think the reason why we can I think part of the reason why I think I starved to death. I mean, I like like I really just don't think that we would feel any other obligation in our lives other than give him praise. We would just praise him. And praise him and praise him until we had nothing left. Every fiber of our being would praise the Lord if we could see that balance sheet. If we could see all he's doing for us right this second. How he's an angel is holding your, 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 your body together right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> An angel sent by Jesus is holding you together. Is holding your frail points. Is holding your mind. <laughs> Like we've all had fears and worries. Where did they go? Why, why are we still consumed by them? Why? Because God is protecting your mind. Yes, sir. Man. Man. God 
protect us so much for us. <laughs> so much. Like, like when we praise God, we really offer such, I mean, it, it's just such a small act of offering. When, when you when you look at what God is doing, and and this the amazing thing about it is, and this is this is what baffles me, because God is good. So you know I you know I almost expect Him to protect His children, but He protects us in spite of us. He He spends a lot of the time, a lot of His protection is spent on protecting us from ourselves, right. protecting us from. Things that we should already be too mature to even fall into. Things that that he's already sent teaching and preaching and prophecy. And I mean, he's already cultivated the truth in our lives in that area. And he still spends his grace and mercy protecting us from ourselves in areas that, that we have no excuse we don't have any valid excuse to fall into any valid excuse to even be in that spot. And he still is protecting us. So I just, I just, uh, you know, when, when I hear this lesson, I, I just, I'm reminded of his protection, his provision. I'm reminded that, 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 that I so I, I definitely don't see all he does. I didn't know that cat, the move to my neighborhood kept this neighborhood from getting, you know, from a, tr uh, a plane crashing down and, and Something hitting me, you know, like, like I just don't see that. But see, God even pre-calculates. I guarantee you, you know, and, and, and I can't really guarantee this, to be honest. So so I'm not going to guarantee it. But what I am going to say is I'd be willing to place a, a, a big wager that there was someone in Zo Zoar hmm. that God moved on the heart of, heart of Lot on some level hmm. <laughs> to cause him to plead to go to this one little town because there was some little old lady that still trusted in the name of the Lord. <laughs> and, and, and God and God moved on his heart and he went to that town and, and, and somehow protected somebody like me. <laughs> somebody who deserved it. Somebody that deserved all. He, he deserved the fire. He deserved the brimstone. But God said, spoke to his heart, called, made him call upon the name of the Lord on behalf of that. And because of that, he spared somebody who deserved every bit of it mm. i just i just thank you lord right now in jesus name i thank you god thank you god. you're so worthy of praise <laughs> you're so worthy of praise i'm so unworthy to praise you and you're so worthy of praise like like it doesn't fit but i love you thank you thank you i love you god thank you i love you god i just love you, thank you. pastor bobby no sir, no. <laughs> that's the that's that's it, man. That's it. No sir, no sir. It's, 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 it's on that note. <laughs> Ain't had nothing to it. <laughs>